shot over 50 videos in Ecuador. I think it's safe to say one of my favorite ways to share the culture is through food. But what about the other side? What about its drink? In this video, I'm going to share five places in Cuenca, Ecuador to get uniquely Ecuadorian drinks. So let's ditch the mojitos, the Negronis, the gin and tonics, the Cuba Libres, because these drinks are so interesting. So I'm going to tell you what to get and where to get them. All right, I'm here at La Chicheria and I am so excited. This place has been on my list for a year. When we talk about traditional drinks in Ecuador, this is the OG, this is the original one. It comes from indigenous traditions. It's fermented corn. Now, I've had this a couple of times, chicha de jora, which is a fermented corn drink, and I love it. It's got that fermented kind of tangy taste. And here at La Chicheria, you can have it just straight up chicha, which is chicha de jora, or you can have it with fruit added. Right now, the seasonal fruit is chambora, which is a, looks like a squat papaya that's kind of in a star shape, related to the babaco. It's an interesting one, but I wanted to try the original chicha de jora, and you can also have it with a little bit of local spirit. So you can either have it with aguardiente or sugarcane alcohol, or you can have it with mishke, which is from the agave plant. So if you watched my video about Casa Agave, that's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm so excited that we got this drink. It is so fragrant. You can really smell the ferment. As she was walking in, that's all I could smell. So this is called maize Cusco or Cusco corn. Now they explain this as a race of corn. I would say it's like a type of corn, but it grows in Northern Cuenca. And part of the philosophy here really is about total sustainability. And so for the farmers in the area, it would be very easy for them to just grow one type of corn, have a monoculture. But here they really encourage them to have several different races of corn so that they can have a greater sustainability because they also know that they have someone who's going to buy it. So not only are they getting delicious, unique, product, but they're also supporting all of those farmers. So I've had chicha de jora other times where it's been a lighter color, and that's really because when you ferment different types of corn, you're going to have different types of chicha. Wow. This is cool. This is really, really cool. It's like fermented. You get a little bit of the aguardiente in it, so it's a little bit boozy, not too much, but you really get that ferment taste. It's a little bit tangy, a little bit sour. If you can only have one drink in Cuenca, this is the drink. This is absolutely the drink. It's worth it coming down here. I think also they have a museum here that's dedicated to corn. No. No, they don't. So we did just come here for a drink. However, they do have a full menu here. I would say everything very reasonably priced. The most expensive thing is $9 for food. That's like a beef jerky, but they have lots of different um, small plates for four to five dollars. They've got sandwiches for six to seven, and it's a lot of traditional food from the area. And then also, if you don't want to get a um, boozy chicha, you can have one without alcohol, and then they also have uh, a number of different other cocktails, but I really wanted to try the chicha. I am so excited to be here. I'm at Casa Yengo. Forgive me on the pronunciation of that, but I've been to this place before. It's like a little center for gastronomy, and I was here during Day of the Dead, Dia de los Difuntos, and I learned how to make colomarada and also the wawa, the pan. It was awesome. There's also like a cool um, area to buy local artisan crafts and then vegetables and fruits and products. And so I knew coming to La Maria Cocina Libre, which is where I am right now, would be awesome. It's the restaurant part of this like mini gastronomical complex. And it's dedicated to the struggle and resistance of Ecuadorian women in the preservation of traditional Ecuadorian cuisine. So, when I came in the door, I let them know that I wanted to include them in these cocktail series because I knew they had really cool cocktails. And so they said, okay, the bartender's coming over to talk to you. And so, 
she came over and talked to me and it was really good because I learned a lot. First of all, all of the spirits here are local Ecuadorian spirits. So you've got like Mishke, which is traditional agave spirit. And then you've also got aguardiente, which is the um, sugar cane spirit. But also I saw one called Bacan tonic. Bacan in Ecuador is like slang for cool. So a cool tonic. But it comes with vodka, and so I thought, well, I'm not going to get vodka. However, she came over and show, she showed me the bottle and said this is her favorite. And the vodka is actually from Pinchincha area, so the province that Quito is in. And it also includes an ají, a pepper, in the bottom. And look how pretty this drink is. So, in this we've got vodka, tamarind, tonic water, and botanical herbs from the coastal region. So I, I can see some spearmint in there and then there's some, also a lot of things down at the bottom which I think are contributing to the smell. It smells so fresh. And then also, they give you a little teacup of snacks. These snacks are, we've got some plantain chips and then also tostado. So plantain chips, very common. Um, just deep fried plantain sliced thinly. And then also tostado, I've featured so many times. It is toasted corn. Wow. Another reason I hesitated in getting this was I don't love gin and tonic. I find it's too dry. This is like, I don't love too sweet. I don't love too dry. What is that, like the princess and the pea? Or the three little bears? Yeah, you want something just right. It is the three little bears. It has like a fruity flavor. You get the aromatics, but it's not sweet. It is really, really good. It's eight dollars, so I think this might be the most expensive cocktail I've had so far, but it's fantastic. Almost tastes like there's a little bit of berry in there as well. I would urge you to come here, even just to check out this whole place. Also, I love having a female bartender. We need more of those in here, especially if you're going to have a place called La Maria. You know, like let's let the female bartenders run this place. I love this cocktail, it's fantastic. Not too boozy, very refreshing. The view here, well, you're looking out onto an ugly building. However, it's still really lovely. Fun fact, did you know that 85% of people who watch my last video are not subscribed to this channel? If you're one of those people, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button below. And if you're one of those people who are subscribed, I would love it if you could leave a comment below and let me know you've watched. All right guys, so I have been taking my sweet time here. Uh, I've been sitting here, I think, for almost two hours sipping my drink and actually they brought me over a different one to try. So I've been talking to Veronica, the uh, bartender, her sister Cecilia, and then another one of the servers brought me over something to try because they know that I'm really interested in traditional drinks. So this is a mis mistela. And so I'm reading from the menu here. It's distilled sugar cane spirit and it's been macerated with fruit um, in the dark for three months. This one is mora, which is blackberry, and so this is the natural color. The very first taste you get is aguardiente, but it's not a harsh flavor, but then this other flavor comes in, and it's fruit. I think it's some spices too. It's like a, a deep berry flavor. Mora is blackberry, but this is like almost, maybe because it's macerated, it almost gets this like jammy kind of taste going. Mmm, this is so dangerous. On ice, it's delicious. This is the mistela, so it's a fruit that's macerated or kept in a bottle with aguardiente and it takes, so it's like a, an infused aguardiente. This one is capuli. And so I think this one is interesting because the mora is fantastic, but we know the blackberry flavor. Although, the reason why this one was different is that there are two types of blackberries here, and they said this is the bigger one that they use for things like preserves. It has more flavor. Now, capuli doesn't really have a translation into English. It's known as the capuli cherry. And so Cecilia brought over the actual container where they're infusing it. Infusing it. All right, so it is not easy to explain what capulin 
what the flavor is like because there is nothing quite like it. It is a cherry, and so it does have kind of a cherry taste. Um, it's a little bit astringent, a little bit dry. What I would say is if you're one of those people that doesn't like big, bold, fruity flavors, this is definitely the thing to try. It almost reminds me of like a light cherry, but like a good quality one. It's one of those things that you just have to try it. So just around the corner from the hostel is Kailaga and it is home to lots of bars and restaurants but not all of them are good you really do need to know where to go so we're at Casa Barranco and that's because the bartender Juan Pablo is known as one of the best in the city this is my first time here on the outside it looks very unassuming small but it's actually a hotel as well so there are three floors it looks gorgeous a number of different patios we're up on the rooftop which overlooks the river and the city it's gorgeous they have happy hour until 9 p.m includes the classics like mojitos, cuba libre, that kind of stuff. But I got the classic Casa Barranco. So this is their signature cocktail right now. It costs $6, but I got it because Juan Pablo uses local ingredients. And so in this drink, we have aguardiente, which is the local spirit. It's sugar cane alcohol. He also put some Palo Santo syrup in it. Palo Santo is tree from a bark that sometimes you'll see in these buckets around the city burning almost like incense. It smells like incense too. It gets rid of the mosquitoes as well as bad spirits. And if you rub the back of the tree, you'll see it smells like incense. We've got some shaved almond on here as well as some club soda and to top it, maracuya, which is passion fruit. I love that we are not using plastic straws. They actually provide metal straws and you'll see that more and more in Ecuador. You'll see metal and paper straws if you don't travel with your own. Mmm. Ooh, I love it. Pineapple, but not sickeningly sweet. You've got a little bit of bitterness from the Palo Santo, but not too much. This is very refreshing, but doesn't feel like, oh, you're gonna have one and it's too much. This is a fantastic cocktail. So on Calle Larga, we also have Chiplote, which has been around since 2008. It's known for fantastic cocktails. They play sports here, and they also have a diverse bar food menu. It's also home to the Super Cholo. You might think that this is a weird cup. Maybe it looks like a camping mug to you, but actually, before ceramics were really reliable here in Ecuador, people were drinking their coffee out of this. This was like the everyday mug. So they put the Super Cholo in this as a nod to that history. Now, it also has canuto, which is an aged shumir, or the local spirit, aguardiente sugar cane spirit. It has some ginger syrup, some maracuya, or passion fruit juice. We've got some lime juice in there, some club soda. It's garnished with lemongrass and also a dried orange. Now, the canuto is also a little bit different here because they actually infuse it with Herba Luisa, which is lemongrass. It's super bright with the maracuya and the dried orange, also with the lemongrass. And while sometimes aguardiente can be a little bit harsh, this is aged, so it's not bad at all. Mmm, oh, just how I remembered it. Not sugary, just very bright. You've got the citrus flavors, you've got the lemongrass. It's so good. Now Chipotle doesn't have just a happy hour, they have a happy day. So from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. they have like mimosas, Bloody Marys, pina coladas. You can do two for one on those drinks. And then in the evening they have a very generous two for one offer until 9 p.m. So there's always something here no matter when you get it. That you can eat indoors or also have, they have two tables out in the front that look out on Sakai Larga. It's a little bit louder because there are lots of people out on the street, but I love the people watching.
Okay, so I'm here at the Negroni Bar, which has the best view of Cuenca. And I had planned to come here to have a drink, a, a vino hervido, because it's been kind of chilly lately. Made this plan, Andreas and I were gonna do it, and this is one of the most beautiful days of the year. So, this is vino hervido. Very similar to what we know as mulled wine. So in it, we have uh, red wine, sugar, rum, cinnamon, and clove. Of course, all the ingredients change. This is a very common drink uh, in cooler weather. So just to keep it real, I'm gonna tell you, as soon as they brought it, like this is so hot, I can't even hold it. That's why it's in a goblet. I asked them also for some ice because I'm definitely putting some ice in here. This wine will not go to waste. But I also wanted to share with you what this tastes like. Hmm, it's really good. It tastes like a mulled wine. So again, it's rum, spices in the red wine. Normally I don't think a mulled wine has rum in it. They have taken it up a notch. So this was $6.50. I think it was the cheapest cocktail on the menu. You can get uh, national beers for $5.50 or you can also get local beer for $6.50. Not a bad price. Obviously, you're paying for the view because this is the new cathedral and it is gorgeous. We got a bar seat overlooking this view and it is so beautiful. And then this is $2.50 for this large warm glass of Canelazo. Now, Canelazo is a drink very typical in the Andes. I've had it many times. Um, it is alcoholic, so it's aguardiente, which is an unaged sugar cane alcohol, and they mix it with naranjilla fruit, uh, cinnamon, and and sugar. Mm. So the oh, this one's a little boozy. <laughs> I actually have an amazing memory uh, of eight years ago going into the Kenya region. There was a festival there and so everyone was in the streets and there were these people with these big like hot pots of this and they would just scoop it out and sell it to you I was with a friend and we were the only foreigners there we drank a lot of this it was very cold high up in the mountains but this kept us warm it's actually cold tonight so this is nice mm. if you come to the Andes if you come to Cuenca you have to try Canelazo. Lazo